Hey everyone, this is George from DinosaurGeorge.com. One step closer to our 100th video. Um, I'll give you a hint about what the video is going to be about. We receive one particular question at least five times a week, every single week, for every week of the year. It is one particular question, so I have decided once and for all, I'm going to answer that question and that way, hopefully, I won't have to get it 50 billion times in the future. So that's what's coming up on our 100th episode, but it's a little special. All right, let's get into it. Emma from Noblesville, Indiana says, hello, Dinosaur George, it's me, Emma, again. Emma, great to hear from you. Emma's one of my friends on Facebook. She says, long time, no annoying questions for me, huh? <laughs> Emma, your questions are not annoying. She says, first of all, I hope all is well with you. Uh, you know, Emma, thank you very much. All is well with me, I'm very busy, but uh, I hope all is well with you and your family and of course your friends. She says, okay, my question is, I was wondering the other day about the sleeping habits of a dinosaur. I know that large animals that we see today are not able to lay down to sleep, for their sheer mass could cause them damage. Does this mean that dinosaurs such as sauropods would have had to sleep standing up like a horse is sometimes known to do? And the same goes for T-Rex and his small arms. Um, I'm sure getting up would be a problem for him. Emma, this is a very, very good question. My belief is that probably the majority of the bigger dinosaurs, uh, even the Ceratopsians, probably slept in a standing position. That's very common. Now, they certainly had the ability to sleep laying down, but to your point, their sheer mass would have caused a lot of damage to the ribs. You know, broken and healed ribs, we see a lot in fossils, so maybe that's one of the reasons why. Maybe some of the dinosaurs did prefer to lay down, but uh, my best guess is they probably st slept standing up. Now, as for theropods, like Tyrannosaurus rex, he has a very strange bone called the pubis bone. We sometimes call it the boot. It's that funny bone that is between his, two, between his legs that hangs down and kind of, it looks like a hammer almost. Um, that bone seems to be capable of supporting some weight. So perhaps tyrannosaurs and some of the other theropods may have kind of slept more like the position a kangaroo takes when it relaxes, sort of splaying its legs, squatting down on that bone and leaning backwards on its tail. That may be a possibility. I don't know if it could do that. I've never studied the skeleton to see anatomically if it had the ability to do that, but it's certainly been proposed and I think it's a plausible idea. Uh, great to hear from you, Emma. It's always good to hear from you. All right, Eric from Appleton, Wisconsin says, Dear DG, do you think that the huge eight-foot arms found a few years ago are the arms of a huge cousin of Gallimimus, or, you th or do you think it's really that of a giant allosaur? P.S. I'm a huge fan of you. Eric, that's very kind of you. Very kind of you to say. You know, those arms are, belong to Dinochirus. And I've seen a lot of different uh, proposed ideas of what that dinosaur is. Those, that's all that was found were its arms. Um, found in Mongolia. Um, you know, I look at the shape of the claws, and to me, they do not look to be similar to those of Gallimimus or Struthiomimus or any of the Mimus brothers. Uh, I don't think that they, I think they look more predaceous, more that they belong more to a predatory dinosaur. So I'm not in the camp that believes that it's a gigantic um, uh, ornithomimus. I personally believe that that is a different kind of dinosaur. Probably not an allosaurid, so to speak, but certainly I think it is a big predatory dinosaur. I could be wrong. I've never had the chance to really go into detail. I've seen the arms uh, or cast of the arms, but I've never had the chance to actually study them in great detail. So what I'm saying is simply based off of glancing at the bones and being able to look at the claws. But that's my best guess. All right, Rahul from Brampton, Canada. Can mosasaurs attack Hesperornis like orcas on seals? Certainly they could, of course they could. I think mosasaurs would have attacked, uh, would have attacked anything within their environment that they could have caught. Now, Hesperornis was a non-flying bird, a flightless bird, so it certainly could have been a target for them. Um, I don't doubt at all that mosasaurs would have eaten them. I think, Rahul, that, that anything that swam within a view of a mosasaur would have been potential dinner, and that includes other mosasaurs. All right, Linda from Portland, Oregon. She says, Dear DG, I like to learn about paleontology. Jurassic Fight Club is one of my favorite shows, but I only see it during Dinosaur Week, and it's usually during my school time. 
uh, completely inconvenient. I understand that, Linda. I understand that completely. So my question is, why don't you have some kind of regular show like Jurassic Fight Club all year long? Well, Linda, the reason why is the television networks determine what shows are going to be on. And they basically pay me and people who do things like I do to create these shows. Um, they're not interested in doing additional shows. I don't think the ratings were as good as they had expected. I know that it was a very high budgeted show because there was a lot of animation. And they just don't want to spend that kind of money on animated shows. And so that may be why you don't see it year round. I will tell you this, I know that at, um, at Amazon.com, on the History Channel website, and also in uh, Best Buy, you can buy the collection on a DVD. So maybe you should do that. That way you can watch it at your convenience and uh, you can go back and watch the parts that you really like the best. But I'm glad you like the show, Linda. Okay, Thomas from Martinton, Illinois. Thomas says, I just wanted to say that my wife and I love your Jurassic Fight Club series a whole lot. Thank you, Thomas. That's very kind of you. I'm glad that you and your wife like it. Uh, we re-watch it often. In fact, just tonight we re-watched the one on the raptors and the T-Rex. I collect them by fossils, and I have a number of over-raptor fossil eggs. I have often wondered about the purpose and the function of those two piercing pro teeth projections in the middle of the bird-like beaks of over-raptors. I, I understand, they're very confusing. Martin says, I don't think that it was for opening clams and mussels as some uh, site. Um, as they came from a very dry, arid uh, climate. Well, I agree with you, uh, Mar uh, Thomas. That's one of the things that always amazes me is this idea that they are clam eaters. Um, I, I don't believe there's any dinosaurs that are specialized eaters that only live off of one thing. And the same goes for I don't believe that they are egg eaters uh, exclusively. The idea that enough dinosaurs are laying eggs year round to be able to supply this dinosaur with enough, enough eggs to survive just doesn't make any sense to me. I think that those odd projections, um, I don't know if they were as much related to diet. They might have just been leftover teeth from earlier ancestry. There are some fish that have teeth inside of their jaws. Uh, mosasaurs have a secondary row of teeth inside of their jaws. Dimetrodons have a secondary teeth, a set of teeth inside of their jaws. Those are all remnants of earlier ancestors who had uh, different kinds of teeth. It's certainly possible that um, that uh, Oviraptors, those teeth, uh, those those projections may not have been functional at all. They could have potentially been the remnants of early ancestors who, whose teeth are just non-functioning. I just don't know. My best guess though in looking at that odd beak is that they were more than capable of tearing flesh and catching prey simply with their beak and that those two projections in the roof of their mouth may, maybe, I don't know, maybe they serve the purpose of holding the prey, uh, positioning the prey and holding it still. Uh, you had commented in your questions that you think they may have been used for catching snakes and lizards. That, that's not a bad concept. Uh, it's kind of an interesting concept. Uh, snakes were not really around till the very end, so snakes may not have made much of a, uh, of, um, a part of their diet, but lizards were absolutely there and little furry mammals were there. And so perhaps those odd appendages were simply used to help position the food into the mouth or hold it in place. I'm just not sure. I wish I did know though, but uh, anyway, I'd love to see pictures of your, uh, of your eggs. Uh, send some pictures to me. I always love looking at that stuff. All right, that's it for this time. If you've got a question, go to my website, dinosaurgeorge.com. Click on the Ask Dinosaur George page, submit your question. Keep in mind, we get a thousand questions a week. There's just no way we can answer them all. So I apologize for those of you that continuously write and we just don't seem to be able to pick yours. Uh, literally what these folks do is they go through and they just randomly pick them, read them, and if they like the question, then they give me the list. Um, so there are some cases where we get so many, they may not even read all of them. So again, that's just the way it goes. All right, everybody, take care of yourselves. Take care of the people around you. For you young people out there, make sure to continue to practice your reading because reading is incredibly important. And for everybody out there, Treat your friends the way you would want to be treated, and the world will be a whole lot better place. And always use good manners. I'll talk to you soon. Looking forward to that 100th episode. It's going to be a killer.